last time we walked with Jacob to this interesting site called Bethel. Now because of fear for his brother who wanted to kill him, he avoided people contact. He slept outside of Bethel. Killed feelings devastated him and he used a stone for a pillar. He lost the most precious gift called human relationships. Have you lost precious human relationships? That night he told the stars that he also lost his self-respect. You know, if we start losing, we lose a lot. Two days ago, he was the son of a wealthy father. Now he only walks with the only possession he's got, a walking stick. That's all. Sometimes we lose so much. And if we lose a friendship, it's like death. But when Jacob was devastated, the God of the universe provided him a ladder to connect him from the earth to heaven. Jacob was invited to climb the ladder and receive God's loving care and his unconditional forgiveness. You cannot earn God's forgiveness. It's a gift. And he says, come and take it. God the Father still provides the ladder called Jesus, inviting us to come to him. My dear friend, if you're in a mess, and it happens to all of us, please make use of the ladder, Jesus Christ. God's ultimate dream for us all is to one day receive a sinless nature and replace our sinful nature in order to see him face to face. So we'll have a battle as long as we live. But when Jesus comes, all things will be made new. I told my friend at Bethel that God saves us from the guilt of sin. Uh, from the power of sin, the guilt, the power, and eventually from the presence of sin. So salvation is very progress progressive. The guilt first, the power of sin, and eventually when Jesus comes, the presence of sin. Just to think about it, there will be no sin in heaven. I'm looking forward to that day. There is a place of quiet rest near to the heart of God a place where sin cannot molest near to the heart of God there is a place of comfort sweet near to the heart of God a place where we our Saviour meet near to the heart of God there is a place of full release near to the heart of God, a place where all is joy and peace. Where? Near to the heart of God. O oh, Jesus, blessed Redeemer, sent from the heart of God, hold us who wait before thee, near to the heart of God. You're always welcome to come close to God, near to his heart. And God said, Behold, I am with you, this is comforting, and will keep you more comfort. Wherever you go, more comfort. And I will bring you back to this land. He was leaving his homeland. For I will not leave you. Isn't that beautiful? He will not leave us, no matter what we do. I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. Can I apply this promise to myself? Yes. All the promises, 4,350, you can apply to yourself. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place. And I did not know it. You know, sometimes God is with us and we don't know it. He, the creator of a billion galaxies, wants to be with us. My dear friend, tell me, who are we and who is he? 
And once we uh, uh, appreciate the contrast, we will love him even more. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. No matter what sinful and hopeless condition we're in, God always supplies a ladder to get us back to him. The ladder called Jesus Christ. How do you feel after you had a good dream? You know, sometimes I, I wake up in the morning and I feel so good because of a good dream. How do you think Jacob felt when he awoke the next morning? Seeing the ladder. It is still God's desire to wake us up in the morning with new courage and joy in our hearts. Still is planned for us. This I recall, and I love this. Jeremiah looks at the devastated ruins of Jerusalem. And in spite of that, people were exiled. He wrote this beautiful verse. This I recall to my mind. Therefore, I have hope. Looking at ruins, he says, therefore, I have hope. Through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed because of his compassions fail not. I like this. His compassions fail not. Great is your faithfulness. What a wonderful promise. If you're looking at ruins in your life, like Jeremiah did in Lamentations, remember, God is still faithful. So Jacob went on his way and came to the land of the people of the East. I love the uh, Afrikaans translation of this. It says he picked up his feet. <laughs> he was dragging his feet and now he lifted up his feet. No more dragging feet. If you drag your feet, God wants you to lift it up and carry on on the journey of life. Can you see the firm step of Jacob as he continues from Bethel to his new unknown destination? Now in my prosperity I said, I shall never be moved. What a beautiful promise. Now in my prosperity I said, I shall never be moved. It took him about three weeks to cover 800 kilometers to Padan Aram from Haran. There he sees a beautiful lady coming with a sheep to this well. Man, and he had a new heartbeat. You know, we men love beautiful women. And this is what cheered up Jacob. When their eyes met, the two of them, it was love at first sight. What about when you met your sweetheart? Was it love at first sight or not? What about your partner? You know, God has made us with interesting chemistries. And it came to pass when Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter of Laban, his mother's brother, and the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother, that Jacob went near and rolled the stone from the well's mouth and watered the flock of Laban and his mother's brother, then Jacob listened to this, <laughs> kissed Rachel. Can you see the picture? <laughs> he knew this was going to be his wife. Men, when you saw it, did you realize that this was your wife? Then Jacob kissed Rachel and lifted up his voice and wept. Shame. <laughs> I love the Bible stories. It's so full of passion. And Jacob told Rachel that he was her father's relative and that he was Rebekah's son. So she ran and told her father. There were not too many boyfriends around. With a heart full of adoration, Jacob runs home to tell the news of a newcomer. She tells them of the courtesy and the kiss she received. Hmm. 
Then it came to pass, when Laban heard the report about Jacob, his sister's son, that he ran to meet him and embraced him and kissed him. But a man's kiss is different to a woman's kiss. And brought him to his house. So he told Laban all these things. Laban was a shrewd businessman and we're going to see it. And he deceived Jacob. Terribly hurt him. You know what we sow in life, we usually reap. Okay. And Laban said to him, Surely you are my bone and my flesh. And he stayed with him for one month. Then Laban said to Jacob, Because you are my relative, should you therefore serve me for nothing? And he's so shrewd. He's so shrewd. Tell me, what should your wage be? Typical house in Haran. At breakfast one morning, Laban asked Jacob to tell him about his skills. Your curriculum vitae. Jacob, as a seasoned shepherd, please tell me, what kind of salary do you expect from me? I'll pay you, man. Rachel watches Jacob, who sits opposite her at the table. He asked Rachel to become his wife, but he doesn't have any money to offer the father. In those days, you had to give money to buy your wife. We still have it in some cultures. In our country, we call it la bola. They kept eye contact. Now, Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah. She was not a beauty queen, by the way. And the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah's eyes were delicate. There was a problem with her eyes. Uh, she did not excite Jacob. But Rachel was beautiful of form and appearance. An ugly sister and a beautiful sister. Which one would you have chosen? Now Jacob loved Rachel. So he said, I will serve you seven years for Rachel, your younger daughter. And Laban said, it is better that I give, give her to you than I should give her to another man. Stay with me. This was the bargain. Laban had free labor for seven years. Rachel's heart beats. Ah, oh, he's going to work for me for seven years. Jacob, dear, are you sure seven years for me? You know, I thought you would consider one year at the most. But now you tell me that you're prepared to work, work for me for seven years. Jacob, I feel so very special. And by the way, ladies, you are also worth seven years working for. My young friend, are you prepared to work seven years in order to marry her? Ladies, are you prepared to wait for seven years before marrying your loved one? This is not Jacob and Rachel. Uh, they counted the years and then the months then the weeks, and then the days. Couples, you know, need time to know one another. And Jacob and Rachel had ample time. So, dear young people, if you have to wait a little longer, stick it out. You might discover something that you haven't discovered before. And maybe she's not the right woman. Let's ask Jacob how he managed to wait so long before he married uh, Rachel. So Jacob served seven years for Rachel and they seemed only like a few days to him because of the love he had for her. Beautiful poetry. Seven years, that's nothing. <laughs> then Jacob said to Laban, Give me my wife, for my days are fulfilled that I might go into her. And Laban gathered together all the men of the place and made a feast. We call it the reception. Only after Jacob reminded Laban that he already gave seven years labor, did Laban, orga Laban organize the, the marriage event. 
he had to remind him. You see, if he didn't, uh, he could have worked eight years for Rachel. Laban was a shrewd businessman. He was dishonest. Laban spoke to Leah and encouraged her to deceive Jacob and pretend that uh, Rachel uh, and pretend that she's Rachel during the marriage ceremony. So he's conniving now to get Jacob to marry Leah. Leah. Jacob didn't know anything about this. Leah burst out in tears and confessed that she think this was a, a wonderful idea, Dad. I, I want to marry Jacob. I think I'm in love with him as well. You're looking at the lamp from the time of Jacob. When I go into the museums, I look, is this early bronze, late bronze, middle bronze, early uh, iron, late. <laughs> but this one I identified coming from the time of Jacob. I think the oil in the lamps lasted just a few minutes and then the light was gone. So this kind of uh, oil lamps were used by Laban so that uh, the marriage ceremony got out of light. No light. He couldn't see who was standing next to him. And maybe the shrewd Laban removed all the oil lamps from the bridal room, you know. It was dark when they got there. And maybe Leah had a voice problem and could not talk at night. <coughs> we don't know exactly how they deceived poor Jacob. And he was expecting Rachel that night to become his wife. We come to life with expectations and we meet up with disappointments. So it came to pass in the morning that behold, it was who? Leah. And he said to Laban, hey, uh, what is this you've done to me? Was it not for Rachel that I served you? Why then have you deceived me? Put yourself, my dear male friend, in Jacob's position. Uh, maybe uh, Laban put something in the water as well. Maybe Jab Jacob was a bit intoxicated. He, he couldn't see that this is not uh, Rachel. One day we'll look at the History Channel to get all the facts. Laban replied, It is not our custom, Jacob. man. He had to give the youngest daughter in marriage before the older one. Finish this daughter's bridal week. That's now with Leah. Then I will give you the younger one also in return for another seven years of work. <laughs> Fourteen years to work for his beloved Rachel. And Jacob did so. He finished the week with Leah. And then Laban gave him his daughter Rachel to be his wife. Ah, oh, I'm so glad for the second marriage in in one week, poor Jacob, exhausted after a long wait, falls asleep next to who? Leah. Gen gentlemen, if this happened to you, what then? This time Jacob is on the receiving end of deception. What you sow, you reap. Does this Kurdish woman know about the deception that expired right here? Jacob's painful memories of his double deception of his brother and her father is very, is very painful, very unpleasant. Bread gained by deceit is sweet to a man, but afterward his mouth will be filled with gravel. Can you meet? Can you appreciate this? Mouthful of ground, earth, dirt. Bread gained by deceit is sweet to a man. That was the case with Jacob. But afterward, his mouth will be filled with gravel. And here at Laban, his mouth was filled with gravel. Today, children play is where Jacob's children played long ago. Jacob couldn't handle 
his deceptive father-in-law. He just couldn't handle this man. Uh, are you having a problem handling your in-laws, father-in-law, mother-in-law? But going back to his brother is impossible because Esau wanted to kill him. Guess how he handled this crisis. Thus the man became exceedingly prosperous. This is Jacob. And had large flocks, female and male servants, and camels and donkeys. Question. What could happen when your business partner becomes too prosperous? Now Jacob heard the words of Laban's son saying, Jacob has taken away all that was our, fa our father's. And from what was our father's, he has acquired all this wealth. He came here with nothing, man. And look at this. He exceeds in wealth. And Jacob saw the countenance of Laban, and a deed that was not favorable toward him as before. Now, Afrikaans Bible says, his face was not the same as yesterday. Have you seen people change their facial expressions? Oh, it's so difficult. Then the Lord said to Jacob, return to the land of your fathers and to your family, and I will be with you. Oh, thank you, God. I cannot take Laban one day longer. But how did his wives react to the news that Jacob is going back to his homeland? Then Rachel and Leah answered and said to him, Is there still any portion or inheritance for us in our father's house? Then whatever God has said, to you, do it, sweetheart, let's move. So there wasn't a good relationship between the daughters and the father. Uh, we are looking at relationships right now. It is the sweetest thing if a relationship is pleasant, but it's hell if it's unpleasant. And may God help us to learn a few lessons during these four lectures. Documents found at Nutsi, that's Irbil, northern part of Iraq, in Mesopotamia, the land between two rivers, indicate that in a patriarchal age, the possession of the family's household gods, such as Laban had, guaranteed to their holder the title to his father's properties. This comes one, from one of my books in my library, ancient Near Eastern text. This was probably the chief reason why Laban was so eager to retrieve him. So they gone, and he notices his, his deities are gone. His little gods are gone. So the one who has it will inherit everything he has. I wanted to ask this old man if he could tell me more about Laban who lived here. But he was quiet. Not everybody knows the beautiful story of the Bible. Jacob left Laban, but Laban pursued him and tried to force him to return to Padan Aram, that is Haran. Listen to his reaction. These 20 years, now he speaks to his father-in-law Laban, these 20 years, I have been with you. Your ewes and your female goats have not miscarried their young, and I have not eaten the rams of your flock. He is unburdening. We call it catharsis, a Greek word for cleaning up. <laughs> he brings up all those things that bothers him. That which was torn by beasts, I did not bring to you. I bore the loss of it. You required it from my hand, whether stolen by day or stolen by night. Uh, Father Laban, you were not too kind to me. I did this. How did you treat me? There I was, 
in the day the drought assumed me and the frost by night and my sleep departed from my eyes. Father Laban, many times I couldn't sleep. It was a 24 hour job. Thus I've been in your house 20 years. I served you 14 years for your two daughters and six years for your flock. And you have changed my wages 10 times. My psychiatrist friend in Haran, he can speak about relationships. And uh, he says he supports dialogue, but the dialogue should be in a decent man manner. Don't scream upon one another. Uh, if you scream, you, you destroy the dialogue. Except the God of my father, the God of Abram, and the fear of Isaac had been with me. Surely thou hast sent me away now empty. So he, he got this off his chest. God had seen mine affliction and the labor of my hands and rebuked thee yesterday. Tell Ramta, ancient Ramot Gilead, where Laban and Jacob reconciled. You know, when I visit these ancient sites, the stories come back to me and they, they get more meaning for me. Initially, it was uneasy to talk, but eventually they reconciled. Do you need to reconcile with someone? Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there rememberest that thy brother hath ought against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. So when you go to church, and... Uh, you think, hey, I made a mess in this relationship. It's better to try and go and fix it than to sit in church. First, be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. To God, recon reconciliation is more important than coming to church. What a thought. Maybe someone is waiting for you to reconcile. Please, do it. May God's Spirit help you to reconcile. You cannot afford to miss the next episode in the life of Jacob. The time of Jacob's trouble at the Jabbok River is a type of what's going to happen to us in future. May God help us to handle the current crises so that we will be able to reconcile with the estranged friends. Father in heaven, thank you for the stories of the Bible. Thank you for the bad news and the good news. And I pray you please help us to be more kind to unkind people. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you for watching this presentation. To subscribe to our channel, click here, then click the bell to get notifications. For the next presentation, click here. See you next time.